أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الذي خلق السماوات والأرض وجعل الظلمات والنور ثم الذين كفروا بربهم يعدلون والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده سيدنا وحبيبنا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين لا سيما باقية الله في الأرضين إمام صاحب العصر والزمان روح وأرواح العالمين لتراب مقدمهم الفدا We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Who has bestowed upon us this opportunity in our lifetime To sit in this gathering of Eid al-Fitr At the end, at the completion of the fasting the month of Ramadan Indeed, it has been a great honor for us to be part of those who participated in the month of Ramadan. Those who were fasting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first thing today in my khutbah is to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is to appreciate to Allah for this gift that He has given to us to be part of Muslims who have been fasting and participating and taking all endeavors to make sure that we are, we respect, we submit to the total will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As if we thank Allah, Allah will increase. But there is nothing we can thank more than giving this opportunity. There is a lot of brothers and sisters who were fasting last year of Ramadan, but who were not fasting this year due to different reasons. Some have passed away, some were in the hospitals, some were for some reasons down low imams, they could not fast. But inshallah, Allah gave us this tawfiq to be part of those who are fasting. It is something we have to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second thing I want to do today is to congratulate you, all of you, brothers and sisters, for all the efforts you have shown in this Ramadan, for all the time you have spent in salah, in tarawih, in qiyams, in all activities of religion. Every gathering you had, some had the amals. So, brothers and sisters, for your time and for you to submit to the will of Allah from the time of dawn, from the time of sun, sun, sunset, sunrise up to sunset, you have been fasting, not eating, preventing yourself from that which is halal, lawful for you. But for the sake and the pleasure of Allah, it is you deserve a congratulation, brothers, as in Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So we send our congratulations to you, brothers and sisters. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all your efforts and accept all your small deeds and forgive all our deeds and the mistakes, inshallah. Where we, where we have gone wrong, we ask Allah to forgive our huge mistakes and accept the little amal we have done and grant us Jannah and release us from the hell of fire, inshallah, among those who are relieved, inshallah, today. Ramadan. Is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, Ya ayuhal ladheena amanu kutiba alaykum usiyam kama kutiba ala ladheena min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. O oh, you who believe, fasting has been prescribed unto you as it has been prescribed unto those who came before you, la'allakum tattaqoon. For what purpose? So that you gain the consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that you regain taqwa. Taqwa, it is something that is not picked from the street. The aim of the whole fasting month of Ramadan is that trophy. Today, alhamdulillah, we are in the company of the coach and the soccer players. We want to give an example from the soccer. If you have a big tournament, if you want to win a tournament, you have to train your players hard. You have to train them harder, even harder. If you know you are going to play for 90 minutes, you are going to give them exercise up to two, three hours so that they can sustain that momentum when they are playing the game. They have been practicing for playing three hours. Now when it comes to play, 
So now in Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala train us for the whole month. How does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala train us? A psalm. Psalm is, is in the books of Fiqh, Fuqaha, they, they explain it as Imsaq. You know, Imsaq is just to hold yourself. In Arabic language, Imsaq is used even for breaking the cars. It's a word you can use, it's a take break. That word can be used to, to break the horses that is running. Normally the horse's nature is to run, to run, but it has some, <coughs> some ropes where you want, don't want it to run. You hold it tight so it doesn't, it doesn't run fast. Those who have donkeys in Pacharos, they can know that, inshallah. Amars are here, they will know, they know how to stop the donkey when it's running. But Imsak, the fasting month of Ramadan, inshallah, it is there to, to, to hold our breaks. We are in nature, we have so much fasting. We have hawa. We have desires Im imported in ourselves. We have materialistic desires. We have carnal desires that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is training us in a whole month to, to hold them. And Allah does not only train us to hold, like I say, a coach who wants to play for 90 minutes, train even harder, even longer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is training us to even hold that which is halal for us so that after Ramadan we can be able to play 11 months withholding only that which is haram. In the month of Ramadan we have been prohibited to, uh, to approach our women who are halal for us. Our wives, our husbands who are halal for us, we are trained to withhold from them. Our food which is halal. Earnings, our fridge are full of food but we are trained from the time of sunset to sunrise up to sunset to withhold, not eat, imsak. We have to stop now every activity. But we have food. But we are training to withhold it for the past, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these are the things that we are allowed to do in the other month. But Allah is training us harder. So that in the other month we are only, we are only going to stop from that which is halal. In the nature everything Allah created is halal, except few things that are harmful for us that Allah has made haram. So inshallah, this is the month of which we have been trained for a month. And now we are going to have 11 months of now really situation. We are going to play the game now, brothers and sisters. We have been in training for the 30 days. Now we have a month, we have 11 months of playing the game. In 11 months, we have to make sure that that which we have been training for, our coach have been telling us, our ulama have been sitting us in a masajid, in a, in, a, in a majlis. Everywhere we have been taught, lectured how to conduct our life. Now is the time to put into practice, brothers. It is aid today according to Amir al muminin It is aid for those who have gained those lessons of Ramadan. For those who have gained those lessons, and for those who are going to withhold the pressure until 11 months, it is aid for them. They have a right to celebrate. Because now they have gained all the strength to take them towards 11 months of not disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and living in a ta'atullah, complete submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That means those are the people who deserve Eid, inshallah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who deserve Eid, inshallah, and to make, among, um, to make us among those who will succeed in 11 months, inshallah. So how you behave tomorrow or from today, it is going to define if your Ramadan was successful. If you could not do haram, haram in this month, if today you have made intention to make haram today, cancel it. Your Ramadan has been not successful. If your Ramadan has been successful, your coach has trained you for even more, then you have to withhold the pressure until 11 months, inshallah. Let us, inshallah, keep the momentum of taqwa, of giving charity to our brothers, the love we have shown in this month of Ramadan, the kindness we have shown, the good akhlaq, the every aspect of our life we have tried in this month of Ramadan, let's carry it on for 11 months, inshallah, until the other Ramadan come, inshallah. Number two, I want uh, second item I wanted to emphasize today. Today, the Ummah, the Ummah is celebrating Eid in so many problems. The whole Muslim world is troubled today, brothers and sisters. If you open the news channels, if you open every TV, you see the news of Muslims. In our country, we, are, we have also in the month ex experienced medas in the masajid, in the place of worshipping of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
We have seen before itikaf, Muslim going to the masjid to kill brothers who are in itikaf in Cape Town. Today we stand to condemn those activities of extremism in our communities. And this extremism cannot be from the teachings of Islam. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ the Messenger of Allah that we follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has been sent as a mercy unto mankind. Not rahmatu lil muslimin, not rahmatu li ahl sunnah wal jama, not rahmatu li shi'i, rahmatu lil alameen. He was a mercy unto mankind. Therefore our motto, our religion is a religion of love. is a religion of peaceful coexistence. The differences of opinions of people cannot be a base, a definition, or a, an explanation to the head. So therefore, brothers, we have to condemn these hatreds. These hate speeches in our mosque, this extremism of brothers killing one another. What can justify a Muslim going to a mosque and killing people in itikaf? We have seen another murder in, in, Cape, in, in Durban attack in the mosque, you have seen it on your TVs where people attacked the Shia mosque in, in Cape Town, in Durban. This time was a Sunni mosque in Cape Town. These activities are meant to create tensions between Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah and Shia. It is, they are deliberately done to create sectarianism among our communities. Therefore our scholars, our ulama, people in the minbar, the brothers, and sisters, try to avoid sectarianism. Try to condemn these activities. So whether they are done by Shias or Sunnis, they are haram. We, are no, we have no justification to hate. The Messenger of Allah established an Islamic state in Medina in which he signed a peaceful coexistence treaty with the Jews, with the Christians, with all nations. Under the leadership of the Messenger of Allah, there was no oppression. There was no forcing anyone to believe in that which you believe. Islam is a religion of peace. Islam is a religion of freedom. Religion must be conscious. It must be believed. It must be not forced on anyone. لا إكراه في الدين قد تبين رشد من الغي فما يكفر بالتعود ويؤمن بالله فقد استمسك بالعروة العود. There is no compassion in religion. If I don't agree with you, let me make peace. Let's learn how to disagree as brothers and sisters. I disagree with you in this opinion. This is my opinion. Alhamdulillah, we are brothers. Let's shake hands. Let's try to fight this sectarianism. This sectarianism has been seen on international level also. We have seen people for caught in Mecca trying to ban Kaaba, the most holiest city of Medina. What have come over this Ummah of Rasulullah? That a Muslim can go to, to Hajj or for Umrah with the intention to ban Kaaba. So what has come this hatred? This definitely is coming from the teachers who are not from this who are no students of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa There's no any reason you can destroy a church. In Islam, we are not even allowed to destroy a church. We are allowed to protect the Christian churches and synagogues. Surat al-Hajj. وَلَوْ لَا دَفَعُ النَّاسُ بَعْضُهُمْ بَعْضٍ لَهُدِمَةِ السَّوَامِ وَالْبِيعِ وَسَلَوَاتٍ وَمَسَاجِدٍ يُذْكَرُ فِيهِ إِسْمُ اللَّهِ If it was not for the protection of those men, strong men, sahaba, companions, who protected the whole religion, the, we, they were protecting during jihad, they were protecting the churches, the synagogues, the mosques. Every place in which Allah, the name of God is mentioned, it is our duty to protect it. So whether they are Christians, they are Jews, they are mentioning the name of God, we have to protect them. We have to protect the place of worship. Then how comes now if there are Muslim brothers from a different school of thought, from different matahib, a, 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 a mere fikir differences? We have different fikir rulings. Why can't we tolerate our brothers who, have, who, who follow Imam Shafi, if I'm Hanbal, if I'm Hanafi, if I'm Imam Jafari? What's wrong with who can't? So we need to learn the ulamas, the people in the mimbar, they have to take responsibility for this hatred. They are not teaching the people the love of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa The Messenger of Allah came to teach love and came to teach compassion to all human beings. لَكَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ عَزِيزٌ عَلَيْهِ مَا عَنِتُمْ حَرِيسٌ عَلَيْكُمْ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَؤُوفٌ رَحِيمٌ A messenger has come unto you. Who worries about the situation of you? Who is, doesn't sleep about your physical, your social, your economical situation? Distress is the messenger of Allah. He was there to try and forge solutions for the Ummah. So, inshallah, brothers, this situation cannot be 
attributed to Islam. This extremism and hatred, it is not a teaching of Islam. It is a teaching of those who are not learning from Islam, definitely. Inshallah, this is the point I want. The last point I wanted to make is, Inshallah, we have seen the global arrogance increase today in this Ummah. When Muslims were fasting, we have seen increasing in barbaric activities of Israel regime against the people of Palestine. We have seen the state of Israel increasing their activities against the, against the civilians of Palestine. We have seen so many thousands in this month of Ramadan have died, including all the paramedics who are trying to save lives of the peaceful protesters. There is another apartheid going on in the state of Israel that has surrounded a small Palestine. As you know, South Africans, we understand better what is apartheid, but it is taking place in Palestine today. So it is our duty, it is a duty as an international community to give our support to the nation of Palestine and to commit ourselves to contribute whatever little we can to liberate the state of Palestine. The state of Israel has violated all international laws. It has gone against the resolution of the United Nations. This so-called United Nations that is ruling the world, it is a toothless organization which only issues mere resolutions against Israel, but there is no t action taken against an apartheid state. We have seen this toothless organization called United Nations overseeing genocide taking place in Rwanda and any other parts of the world. And we are seeing it overseeing genocide taking place in Yemen, where other countries are killing Yemen's people. Saudi Arabia is bombing Yemen is for now almost two years. Millions of people are dying. This organization is saying is, is ruling the world, under which the Security Council, the what they call Security Council, is not based on the democratic values that the West is promoting. Democratic values means the rule of people, by the, is a rule by the people, for the people. Who elected the five members of state of Security Council in that position? Nations have not said to, the, to, to vote Americans and Chinese and French to that permanent veto holding positions. No one has voted these people. They have just used guns to secure those, six, those positions. And they are using guns to control the whole world. They are bullying the whole world. So the whole world must stand up and revolt against these unjust organizations that are bullying all other world. The whole African countries are bullied. Inshallah, we have seen our government taking a right position to withdraw the ambassador of South Africa from, from Israel as a result of killing of our Palestinian brothers. This is the humanitarian activity from our government. Our government in nature is a government that is humanitarian. Inshallah, we, con we, we congratulate the government of South Africa, Inshallah, and the people of South Africa for solidarity they have shown. All political parties, EFF, uh, DA, all African National Congress, all the parties have joined their hands to condemn Israel apartheid. This is something we need to commend from the South African, inshallah, side. Because they understand the, the situation, they have lived under apartheid. And inshallah, in our city, Kurman, inshallah, we have seen our brothers going to the malls, trying to raise awareness for this. It's a, it's, a, it's a great honor for you, brothers and sisters. Inshallah, you have to keep it up, and you don't have to undermine all your efforts, inshallah. Because someone, somewhere has to know about this apartheid going on. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to release Imam Zaman to come and end these injustices in the world, inshallah. We ask Allah to restore peace and justice and security to the world, inshallah. We ask Allah to bless and to have mercy on those Muslims who have died in this month of Ramadan, our brothers and sisters, whether we are related or not, as long as they believe La ilaha illallah Muhammad was. We ask Allah to forgive them, inshallah. We ask Allah to restore peace in the Muslim lands in Yemen in Syria, in Iraq, in Kashmir, in you know, all Muslims are struggling, we ask Allah to have mercy on them, inshallah. A'udhu billahi min shaitanir rajeem. Bismillahi rahmanir rahim Wal asr inna al-insan ala fi husr ila al-ladhina amanu wa amilu al-salihat wa tawasaw bil-haq wa tawasaw bil-sabr. Barakallahu li wa lakum bil-Qur'an al-Kareem. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على البشير والنذير والسراج المنير الطهور الطاهر العالم الظاهر بالقاسم المصطفى محمد صلوات
Once again, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this opportunity, for this great Eid in the name of Islam. We could not have been Muslims if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not choose us, inshallah. It is a great name we have. We have to thank Allah enough and if we thank God, God will increase. The Sunnah of Allah, every time you thank Him for a Naima, Allah increases. And every time you complain, Allah then withhold the Naima, inshallah. We ask Allah to make us among those who appreciate the bounties in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Appreciation is something that is very important in life. Because once you appreciate, Allah increases. And once you don't appreciate, Allah will remove His Naima from you because you don't appreciate, inshallah. Appreciating our children, our sisters, our mothers, everyone's a little effort, they do less up, learn to appreciate everyone's effort. Because appreciation creates talents. Once you appreciate from someone, he increases even better. The talents are created through appreciations. And criticism and criticizing one another destroy talents. Those who have been criticized have been always suppressed and suppressed and they end up talents dying. So inshallah, if someone is trying something, let's learn how to encourage them, to appreciate the little they do so that they can improve better. Instead of looking for small mistakes, to criticize and criticize. And once we criticize one another, that love is gone, that compassion is gone. So we must capitalize on good. We must capitalize on good. Look into me, that which I do in good. Don't focus on that which I don't do right. Because once you, you, you appreciate, then I will improve and I'll improve. Once, Takbir. Once, Allah oh. Akbar. Takbir. Allah Akbar. Takbir. Allah Akbar. Nare Rasala. Ya Rasulullah. Nare Rasala. Ya Rasulullah. Nare Haydari. Ya Ali. So inshallah this is uh, nasiha I want to give you is appreciation. We must learn to appreciate. The little from one another. Husbands from wife. High to, to husband. Brothers to sisters team members to coach, coach the team members. Let us all learn how to appreciate. Let us all learn how to see that which is good in our brothers and sisters. Let us learn how to oversee mistakes. Let us not zoom into mistakes. Rather zoom in what is good, inshallah. Then Allah will increase ourselves, inshallah, through love and compassion. Love can cure. Whereas hatred, criticism does not create. Criticism destroys even the talent that are there, inshallah. We ask Allah to make us among those who appreciate and who are not among those who are critic criticizing every day, inshallah. Last point I wanted to, to say, brothers and sisters, we need to create environments for taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Taqwa is not achieved without creating environment. The hukum al-sharhi cannot take place if there is no environment created for it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, youth, youth must, must not commit zina. I'm giving an example. Fornication, zina, is haram. But there are two types of people who commit fornication. One is the one who just commits fornication because he's a sinner, he's a fasic. He loves to commit fornication. The other one is the other one, the youth, who is pressed with desires, who has no option. He cannot afford marriage. There is no environment created for him to get married. And if there's no environment created for people to get married, what will happen? They will have girlfriends. And what happens when they have girlfriends? Broken homes and broken homes. And what's the result of broken homes? Children born without fathers. Children going around the streets alone. We, have, we are suffering this social disease. Why as a result of parents not taking place? Some parents not taking responsibility to create environment for their children to grow up. And when children grow up on the street, are you going to blame them? Now our children are caught up in drugs. Our children are caught up in drugs. Do we take now our children and send them to jail? Rather, we must establish environment that protect our children from falling into these traps of drug dealers. Why don't we create an environment that is drug free? Why don't we protect all those people who are selling drugs to our children from our communities? <coughs> Why don't we take all the orphans that are not taken care of and put them somewhere they can have families and they can have love and compassion, they can go to school, they can... So if we have this hukum sharai, don't commit zina, then you must work to create that environment in which does not encourage anyone to commit zina. 
where everyone is married, where no one is naked on the street, where no one is playing with the next. So if we create this environment, inshallah, where the husbands stay with the wives, the, so all of this environment have to be created for hukum shari to take place. So we have only been on the massage, don't commit zina, don't smoke drug, don't do that. We are not working anything to create environment to stop our children from smoking drug. Smoking drug does not come from AI, Qala Rasulullah sallallahu smoking haram. That hadith cannot prevent our use from smoking. That may hadith on the member. If you are a mulana, then you must work hard to create environment for your youth. So that they do not fall in the traps. So this is the thing we need to create. We need to create environments for our hukum shari to take place. We don't have to emphasize, don't do this, don't do that, don't do that, while we are not doing anything to prevent such situations. So inshallah, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give wisdom to our leaders and to give wisdom to our ulama and our scholars to see into these matters inshallah and to our government, to our leaders in the society, to create the environment that will create the youth that the country will be proud of. The youth that will benefit the country, the youth that will not be a liability to the state. So many, so many of our youth now are, are sitting in jail. They are liabilities now. State has to feed them. Where well, this youth can be used positively, but what went wrong? Somewhere families were broken. Somewhere someone did not take responsibility. Somewhere, so we cannot merely just blame our youth and take our youth to jail. All of it. we cannot do that, because we need just to go to the back and see, as a government, where did we go wrong? Where we keep promoting materialism, where we keep promoting uh, money and materialism, and we, we kick out religion from our lives. Then we see this materialism at its top. Whoever gets to the office gets material and forget the people. We ask Allah to save our life, inshallah, and to save this ummah, inshallah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وعذل الشرك والمشركين اللهم أغفر المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات اللهم كن لوليك الحجة ابن الحسن سلواتك عليه وعلى أبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناد وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك توعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين صلوا على محمد وآل محمد